Genetics is the science that studies inheritance, or the way parents transmit certain traits to their descendants. And Mendelian genetics refers to Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk, who studied inheritance by experimenting on pea plants. He cross-pollinated the flowers of different plants together, took the seeds that developed from the pairing, planted those seeds, and took careful notes on the types of peas that resulted in the subsequent generations. You might say, as a monk, he was trying to find his inner peas. Now, in addition to having lots and lots of peas in his garden, he helped to formulate two important laws, the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment. So to start out, Mendel took plants with violet flowers and plants with white flowers, and crossbred them. This original group of flowers are called the pea generation, as in parent. And then when he obtained some peas, he planted them and got more plants. And the flowers in this offspring generation were called F1, or filial 1. It turns out that the F1 generation consisted of all violet flowers. So he called the violet trait dominant. While the white trait, which appeared to be lost in the F1 generation, was called recessive. Enjoying our Osmosis videos? Unlock your full potential with an Osmosis subscription. Get unlimited access to every Osmosis feature and resource with a free seven-day trial. Next, Mendel let the violet flowers in the F1 generation cross-pollinate amongst themselves. And when they formed peas, he planted them again. From this, he got more plants and the flowers from the second generation of plants he called filial 2, or F2. It turned out that some of the plants in this F2 generation had white flowers, whereas other plants had purple flowers. In fact, the ratio was about three violet flowering plants for every one white flowering plant. Based on this experiment, Mendel drew a few conclusions. First, since the F1 violet flowers had some offspring plants that produced violet flowers and other offspring plants that produced white flowers, it meant that the F1 plants must have contained both of these elements. The inheritable elements of pea plants are its gametes. So that meant that the gametes of the F1 plant contained either the dominant violet trait or the recessive white trait. The F2 plants are created with one gamete from each parent. And Mendel worked out that the white flowering plants resulted when they received both white flower elements and that plants that had at least one violet flower element from either parent would produce violet flowers. Mendel didn't know this at the time, but the element he was referring to were segments of DNA called genes that encoded each flower color. These genes were located on specific parts of chromosomes, called loci. Different versions of a gene are called alleles. And in the case of the flowers, there were two alleles, a white and violet allele for flower color. A helpful way to visualize Mendel's experiment is to use a Punnett square. Imagine a box with four squares in it, where we put the genetic information of one parent, or genotype, on the horizontal row, and the other parent on the vertical column. The dominant allele, represented with a capital letter, codes for a violet flower, and the recessive allele, represented with a lowercase letter, codes for a white flower. The letter we choose doesn't matter, so let's use capital P for the violet flower allele and a lowercase p for the white flower allele. In the P generation, Mendel used pure breeding plants, so their genotype was two of the same alleles. In other words, both of the parent plants in this generation were homozygous for flower color trait. Homo meaning same, and zygous referring to the male and female alleles. The violet P plant had two of the same dominant alleles, capital P, capital P, and therefore had all violet flowers whereas the white pea plant had two of the same recessive alleles, lowercase p, lowercase p, and therefore had all white flowers. Now, the observable trait that results from the genotype is called the phenotype. In this case, the phenotype is the flower color. So when the violet and white flowering plants were crossbred, each offspring got a dominant allele from the violet flower parent and a recessive allele from the white flower parent. Since the two alleles are different, these plants are all heterozygous, meaning that they have hetero or different alleles for the flower color trait. The phenotype of these heterozygous plants was that they all had violet flowers, because the dominant capital P allele masks the recessive lowercase p allele. 
Now when we breed any two of these heterozygous plants in the F1 generation, we can make a new Punnett square. With the capital P lowercase p genotype of one parent on the horizontal row, and the same capital P lowercase p genotype of the other parent in the vertical column. When we use the Punnett square, we get one offspring with a capital P capital P genotype, two with a capital P lowercase p genotype, and one with a lowercase p lowercase p genotype. The three plants with at least one capital P allele will have a violet flower phenotype, and the one plant with a homozygous lowercase p lowercase p genotype will have a white flower phenotype. This was the ratio of plants that Mendel observed in the F2 generation. And it helped establish the law of segregation, which states that alleles segregate, and that offspring acquire one allele from each parent. Now, it turns out that in addition to flower color, Mendel also observed the seeds of his pea plant, specifically their color and texture. He noted whether the seeds were yellow, which we'll call the dominant big Y allele, or green, the recessive little y allele, and whether the seeds were round, which we'll call the dominant big R allele, or wrinkly, the recessive little r allele. As before, Mendel started with pure breeding plants. One of them was homozygous dominant for both traits, which means that it was capital Y, capital Y genotype for the color trait, and capital R, capital R for the seed texture trait. So this plant's phenotype was that it had yellow, round seeds. The other plant was homozygous recessive for both traits, which means that it had little y, little y genotype for color trait, and little r, little r genotype for texture trait. So its phenotype was that it had green, wrinkled seeds. So Mendel cross-pollinated these two plants, and the result was that all of the plants in the F1 generation got capital Y, capital R from one parent, and lowercase y, lowercase r from the other parent, and therefore were capital Y, lowercase y, capital R, lowercase r. So far, so good. But then Mendel bred two of these F1 plants with one another, and things got interesting. Let's put this in a Punnett square. For these two traits, there are four different combinations for each parent. Capital Y, capital R, capital Y, little r, capital R, little y, and little r, little y. When we crossbreed the plants, we can expect that the F2 generation will have seeds that have four different types of phenotypes. Nine are yellow and round. These have at least one dominant capital Y and one dominant capital R. Three are yellow and wrinkled. Those that have at least one dominant capital Y and two little r's. Three are green and round. Those that have two little y's and at least one dominant big R and one that's green and wrinkled the one that has two little y's and two little r's. And that's what Mendel got, a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. And this helped establish the law of independent assortment, that the genes for seed color and seed texture were assorting independently of each other, and they weren't somehow influencing one another. In other words, having one trait did not make having another trait any more or less likely. This law is generally true, except in certain situations, like when two genes are located really close to each other on a chromosome. When that happens, it's called genetic linkage, and the two genes start to move together more often than not, and therefore don't assort independently. Alright, as a quick recap. The law of segregation states that inherited alleles are separated when producing gametes. And the law of independent assortment states that the alleles get distributed to offspring randomly, and without regard to what other allele the offspring might have received. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.